In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a nice good and bad label, basically an extra label on the ticks here and have some white space around this as well. However, this white space here is not 100% pixel perfect. And I'm sure you can figure it out once you know the formula. But as you can see here, it's slightly off, but I will accept that margin of error. And you can, once you understand how to do it, you can figure out the official size and formula for that. I don't want to spend too much time in that. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to customize the tick labels in the radar chart in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to go and get our border template here, which is on this website, chartjs3.com, getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code here. Copy all of this. If you want to understand this code, please watch this video here that explains it all. So once you're on here, or we just paste that code in there, then I'll just change the title, save, refresh. There we are. So let's convert this into a radar chart. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'll say here, radar chart, save, refresh. There we are. But of course we have like double scales. We need to remove them because a radar chart doesn't have a Y scale. Let's save that. There we are. So that works nicely. And now what I want to do is I want to start to um, break this down because based on the question, it was from zero all the way to five. So I need to change first the numbers with the maximum number of five. So let's say five, five, and here is zero, zero. And I guess we can just remove all of these for now. If I save that, refresh, or, or maybe we need something else. Here's a one, two, and three. There we are. So that looks quite fine, but I guess what we could even do here is to hide this because the real focus should be within this item here. However, what we want to do is we want to have in the center the text of bad and at the very top here, the text of good. And we want to have a scale that has basically zero all the way to five, but we're going to remove the numbers. The numbers should not be shown. So to do this, we go in here and the first thing we're going to say here is on the R because this is the R or the radial scale. Basically, that's why we have no X and Y because we have the R which is the, the radial or the, the scale which is more uh, circular. So then what we want to say here, begin at zero to force everything at zero. So we want to do this, refresh, there we are. So now you can see the zero is here but it's not being shown. So now we have this, we want the very maximum of five. So what I'm going to do here is put a comma in here and we're going to say here the minimum will be zero and the maximum will be five. Save, refresh. And you can see once I refresh, this works nicely. So now we have this, but what I want to do now is we can see we have these point, uh, point 0.5, 1 1.5, etc., etc. And all I want to have is five lines here from one all the way to five. And of course the zero line, which will be here, we will uh, cover that eventually. So what we're going to do is here is on the R, we're going to say a comma, we're going to say a ticks. We're going to say here for the ticks, we have a step size and a step size will be one. So you will increment this always with a value of one. Oh, and uh, sorry, I guess that's not what I want to do. So that's cut this out and of course it needs to be within the radial or the R scale. So make sure that's nested within here, save, refresh. There we are. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. So what I want to do here is eventually here the zero here, we have to put in bad and I want to convert this one, the five into a good and everything else I want to hide. So what we're going to do now is to hide those items. To do that, what I'm going to do here is uh, again here between and probably even within the ticks here because this is a part of the ticks. We're going to say here a callback. And this callback functionality allows us to do something with the ticks. We're going to say value. We need a tick argument and we can get here the values as in plural. And this is a callback functionality so we can use here the function error expression. And then what we want to do here is first of all, do a console log and save value, show, refresh. So uh, when we do console log, you can see here we get these numbers here, zero to five, which is correct. 
because these numbers are the uh, the tick numbers which we put in here so I could do even here 10 and you will see that this will change as well from 0 to 10 you might say why are we not seeing it because of the callback we are hiding certain items or there's no return at this moment but if I do it like this it should show but of course here let's put this all back this callback here allows us to return something but right now we don't return anything all we say show us in the console log so if I do here return and I say value you will see it will work again nicely there we are however I want to make sure that only the 5 is shown so what I'm going to do here is we create a very simple if statement so say if the value equals strict uh, 5 in that case what I want to do here is to return uh, return here good as the value. If I save this and remove the others, all right. So you can see here if this uh, doesn't work, or at least doesn't work completely. Now let's see here why we have to do it like this, probably, and then I probably have to check for the others as well. All right. So what I want to do is else return nothing at all. There we are. So now we have this here, and we eventually want to have one for the bad. That should be zero, but but of course here it doesn't show, and that's a tricky one. It should show, or there's probably ways to do it. So far I have not figured out. But if you look very carefully here, you see these transparent items here. This item is here because of our ticks, and every tick gets what we call a uh, what we call a backdrop which is basically a transparency layer behind the text to make it readable which is a very clever design but now this backdrop is blocking or basically interfering with our design so what we'll have to do now is to remove the backdrop of these so how do we do this so what we're going to do here we can do again in the r scale and then what i want to do here um, uh, let's see, oh I guess sorry that we should be still in the ticks, it's still a tick related item. So I'm going to put in a comma here and then we're going to say here show label backdrop and the backdrop here we're going to make a callback functionality out of it. We say your context and again a function arrow expression. So once we have this what I want to do here by default if I say return uh, true, you will see here it, that's basically how it looks like. If I do false, you will see that it will work, or at least it is now, um, it removes it all. However, here, this might be an interference of the text here because the text here and this is, or this item has no backdrop. So, what I want to do is I want to put a backdrop on this item as well. So, what I'm going to do is very simply, this we can basically copy all of this. And we're going to say here, if we have a backdrop, in that case, true, this one true, and else false. Save, refresh, oh, the value is not an item, of course. Uh, what we need to do here is, because I'm copy-pasting it, I need to do a console log to show you what is in our context. And then what I have to do here for now, just hide this. Save, refresh. So when I do this, you can see here we get the item, you see the index number, but we get the tick, and the tick will also have a value. And remember, the value 0 and the value 5 were the ones that we want to target. So we can say from tick to value. So in here, from contact, context, tick to value, if I save this, we will see here now, we get the loop of the value from 1 till 5. So what I'm going to do is, just copy this, put it in there there and save refresh now all right interesting it is this is true and else it's false uh let's see why is it just not responding here so i have to double check on this or maybe we can just hide this one here in the backdrop there we are that's it so we just have to remove a else or for the false return false there's no need for it only true if the case is true, else don't show at all. Simply enough. 
So now we have this done. And basically, we cover now two parts. What we have to do still is see the text in the center plus hiding this. And this hiding here of the inner bit lines is the most tricky one where I don't have a proper solution. I have a solution that is near pixel perfect, but it's not pixel perfect. So what we're going to do here is let's start to work on uh, hiding the text here, or sorry, hiding the grid lines inside here. To do this, what I need to do here is we're going into the angle lines. So the angle lines is another object and the angle lines here refers to these lines from this point to here, there, to there, etc, etc. The lines that are uh, the, the, uh, creating the web basically or the spider web of the radar chart. So what I want to do here is uh, to work with border dash and the border dash is a tricky one but it's very clever so I'm going to say 0 comma 0 basically what we're doing is we're going to work with a border dash or dotted border and then we say you're 50 and then we have here 1500 and I'm going to explain you later on why I'm doing that let's save this make sure you have a comma here say refresh uh, alright sorry we are not allowed to have a semicolon in here there we are so you can see here this works here and basically this here focus on the center say 50 pixels of uh, white space and then we have 1500 pixels of solid line and of course you can make this as big as possible and the reason why is if you have a very large screen it should go from this point all the way outside 2500 pix of, uh, pixels of solid text and I'm not sure if you remove this, would that impact or interfere our design? As you can see here, it does interfere to a certain extent, but maybe if I'm thinking about this, uh, could we change that? Well, I'll just, maybe we can do exactly the opposite here, although I don't think so. Do this, say, all right, that does not work, so we just put it back to its original state. So these three numbers have an impact somewhere. Where exactly, I don't know. Or well, I need to do my homework more better. But anyway, it doesn't matter so much. What we need to do is we need to play around with this number here. And you can see here, this one is tricky. Because the reason it becomes tricky is the moment we're going to change the size of the chart. And let's do that one. Let's say here, the width 50%. And then you can see here, as we play around with it, it changes the amount of pixel. Uh, or white space because of the pixels. We have a solid pixel. So what we want to do now is instead of having solid pixels here, calculate this. And if we do 50, I think we're getting close to it. Or maybe we can do here 60, and then maybe even 70. Let's see that one. And as we get there, I guess maybe 75. Doesn't matter so much. However, you get the point here. We have to play around with this. So now it looks perfect, as you can see see but if I move it make it smaller it becomes a problem how do we solve this to solve this I need to use a callback functionality and have access to this border dash and then make this a dynamic value so what we're going to do here is the following one say border dash and let me just cut this out put it here up but I will comment this out so we have this information above so then I'm going to say here again context so here again the context function error expression because it's a callback functionality and then what I want to do here is start working on a uh, border dash however for this I'm going to use some advanced tricks here there's a few things we need to know because what we need to do is we need to calculate basically the space from the very center all the way to the very top or basically from here to there so to calculate this we will be having, or we need to do some additional calculation to make to calculate this. So first of all, we need to get the center point all the way to up here to know what is the length in pixels of this. Then once we have that, we could divide that because basically from this point to here, we have one, two, three, four, five items here. There's five segments. There's this to here is one segment. From here to here is another segment. So we have five segments to the center. So let's start to work on this. So what we're going to say here is the following. I'm going to create a uh, console log. 
and grab or try to figure out the data. Luckily, ChartJS has some of these things available. Let's look at this context here. If I do this refresh, open up the developer tab and just ignore this weird shape right now. But we have here the information. And of course, it says it cannot execute because we are missing data. Don't worry about that. So we have this data here, 92. We see this here. And this might say, well, we're stuck here. Well, not really, because we could go more deeper. And what I want to do here is, well, let's see if we have the scale here. You can find here the information. And then here, what we need is the Y center. That's this one here. The Y center is the center of this point. That is 200 pixels. And from that 200 pixels, that's the center. We need to eventually calculate uh, the center here. So how much would that be to the very bottom? Do we have a bottom here? Let's look at the B. We can see here if the bottom of 416 and the Y center is 232. So basically from here to here would be a certain amount, or I'm not sure if that is the right way to calculate because this one has the point. However, it should be because this is the center and this is divided by two. Anyway, we're going to test that. And if not, we can just get the very top. What is the top value? If you look at the T for the top, we see here 32. So this minus 32 makes it 200 basically. So it's one or the other. So let's confirm there is a top. That's make, that makes the most sense for now. So I'm going to say a constant. I'm going to give it the name space because that's the space from this point to here. And that space is the context. And then I'm going to show you a nice trick. Uh, oh, sorry, here the scale. So we go here from context to scale. And from scale, we go to Y center. The Y center and a minus exactly the same, but then to the top, deducting the top position. So if I do this, say refresh, we should have here now the value of 200, if I'm not mistaken. Let's say here, space, that will be 200. All right, so that's 200, and we can later on test if this is really correct. So then what I want to do is we have this. What I need to do now is to calculate the amount of segments we have. And the segments is basically the space from here, one, two, three, four, five. So that will mean Basically, if you look here, there are six ticks. The center is one. That's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's five plus zero equals, or at least that one here, one. So it's like an array. So there's six items in here. So what I'm going to do here, constant. And how can we calculate this? I will just give this the ticks length. And the ticks length will be, well, we can check this again by uh, going into the console log of the content. We go here. We open up this, go to the scale, and you we'll search here for the ticks. We have here the ticks, or the T, T, ticks. You can see here, the ticks has a length of six, array of six. All right, so I'm going to say here, we copy this, say ticks dot length. And then eventually I would say minus one because we have five segments. There are six ticks, but five segments. All right, so once we have this, we should be able to calculate now the constant the space between, you know, let's say space in pixels equals. And we will do this, say space minus, oh sorry, not minus, but divided by the five items, say, refresh all right so now we get a number here and let's look at what the number is uh no not that sorry i need to get the space in pixels so we get 40 pixels so it might be that this to this is about 40 pixels so let's test this by grabbing this and now what i'm going to do is we say return this entire array put that in there although uh oh yeah this could be as well because we're going to put this dynamic value in here, save, and I see 75, but it's not 75 because that's on full screen. So now we have this, and you can see here we're slightly off. All right, so this is the most tricky one, and probably probably we need to recalculate it a little bit, but as you can see here, if I do this, we can even test if we do ticks. We just do divide by six instead of five. All right, that works. Now let's see here. 
it works slightly but as I go on like that you can see here this is a little bit I'm going to accept this margin of error but if you want to be really pixel perfect you have to calculate probably these dots and there might be impact of the space here how that's calculated I don't know exactly so I will ignore that one but this is quite close to our desired result so we have this now semicolon here and I can just remove this and remove this console log as well just to keep it a bit clean and we can remove this one here now we don't need that anymore so now the final one is eventually putting the bad text or the text with the string bad in here so how do we do this well uh, I was hoping for for to have see it in here for some reason it doesn't show which is absolutely pity anyway doesn't matter I'm going to just make my own plugin for it slightly overkill but it's the only way how I know as of now if I know a better way I'll make a new video for that definitely so what I'm going to do is in the options here put a comma or not in the options but just outside of the brackets of options I'm going to say plugins and I'm going to say here uh, center label that's it I'm going to grab this create a new uh, center label login block and I say constant this equals ID and just this is just basic plugin information then what I want to do and this is very important is I want to make sure that this good text will be and then the bad text or the, te the string here with the word bad should be behind the data set and we can see that in or well, let me just uh, comment this out before I load this again and then we've got an arrow on here uh, let's show this here and then I will show you what I'm talking about if I have this you can see here the data set is on top loading on top of good so that's fine and that's what we want as well with the bad the bad should be behind this this radar area uh, segment basically so to do that I'm going here back uh, activate this again put it in here and then we're going to say here before data sets draw that's basically the timing I want to draw it I'm going to say chart arcs and plugin options this here then when we have this what I want to do is I want to do an object destructuring and if you're wondering what's an object destructuring object destructuring uh, I have a video about that understanding object destructuring chart yes which you can find as well in the description box because that's what I'm doing right now here which is very very important to understand so what I want to do here is well basically we will need the CTX and I will need the scales and more specifically the R or the radial scale so let's put it there with some space between there that looks a bit nice so now I'm going to draw so I'm going to ctx.save to save all items above and then we say here ctx dot well we want to do a few things I want the text with the right font size and let me just hide this say refresh oh of course this doesn't this is not allowed so, um, all right what happened here sorry that is not what I want to do well let's do this undo this one here or leave a comment here I need to comment out this one refresh so we have our radar chart working again but then what I want to do I want to be in the center here but it must be with the same font color and the same font size and the same font family so let's do that right now so we're going to say here ctx dot font equal and we could make this bold if you want by saying bold but that's not the case here by default it's always 12 pixels then we're going to say here sans serif and once we did that what I want to do is well the font color so it's a ctx dot fill style and the fill style is the font color which is the default is RGBA 102 comma 102 comma 102 comma 1 that's the nice gray color once we have this I want to say a CTX uh, fill text to draw the text and the text will have eventually three values that we need to put in first one it will be the text itself which is for us bad then we have the X position and the Y position which is basically the coordinates so for this one this is the easiest one we can just say here we can hard code this with bad that's the one we wanted the string value for this I will just 
for the console log for this and then just say here console log or sorry comment this out and make console log for the R so we know what we have access what is in the R and remember we already had access in the R so if I save this refresh open up developer tab all right let's look here uh, let me just remove all the console logs here so that we are not distracted by that there we are so then we click on this and we can see here this and you will recognize that this is very similar to previously we had the ticks here we had the y and the x center here the x center and the y center this here is exactly the center of this so we don't have to calculate this we just grab the x position will be the x center so we're going to say here now go back to our console for sorry to this field style or this here i'm going to say here r dot x center because the path is from the r and here r dot y center so if i save this refresh you can see here we are now in the center but it's still not center so let's do the final item because this here is just a text alignment of left, we're going to move that to text align center. To do that one here, ctx text align equals center. Save that. Refresh. Refresh this one. All right. What we could do as well is if sometimes it might not be fully uh, centered um, on vertical level, we could say ctx dot text base line. And then we put this in the middle but by default it's already set on the middle but anyway just to be sure then you have this completely in the center and that's basically it here this here all we need to do here basically if we want to fine tune and be pixel perfect play around with the formula here probably we have these borders here and i think it's not being calculated as a part of it maybe a plus five or six pixels if i do this plus six here uh, we get I guess something let's see if that is true but then you can see here then it doesn't work anymore like that anyway that is something that's basically the real challenge last one but we we made it as close as possible so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to have something else for example clickable labels on the radar chart if you want to learn how to do that i have a special video about that on how to make scales how to make the scales clickable in a radar chart in chart.js which is also quite nice to do gives another dimension of usability and user experience on chart.js